Peter Weston, and uh, and also uh, John McCatherine, and welcome to the both of you. Thank you very Thank much. You Good to see you again. Yeah. Well, tell us what's going on in the in the club. Uh, well, first off, we, uh, Bonnie uh, Farah is the new president of CBOA, Carabasset Valley Outdoor Association, and uh, Bonnie is. Uh, aware of the fact that uh, this coming year, 2019, will be the 20th year of the organization. Uh, and she said, uh, we ought to let people know that and tell them a little sure. bit about us. So uh, I, I think that's essentially it. Got kind of an interesting history. Uh, so we're, we're you know, willing to chat about that uh, or yeah. anything else. That I'd love to, to know it. a little bit more about the history and uh, if you could share a little bit about its inception and why. <laughs> like, it's not uh, just for dining. I know. No, no, no. That's yeah. I like to eat. Yeah. I like to drink. <laughs> it's it's like it's like anything good that happens in Carabasset Valley. It started with beer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> back in uh, back in 1999, uh, the Penobscot Indian Nation, which owns about half of the uh, land in the in the town of Carabasset, uh, and has been a wonderful neighbor. And just to digress. Uh, uh, most of the snowmobile trails in Carabasset, I know all but a few miles of the ATV trails, mm -hmm. uh, the various hiking, biking, uh, you know, fishing locations, uh, hunting areas, and so forth, are all provided essentially on Carabasset, uh, on uh, Penobscot Indian Nation land. And they've been a terrific neighbor over the years. Uh, back in 1999, uh, uh, th they they were finding uh, uh, evidence of abuse of their lands, a lot of garbage and stuff thrown around. In fact, there was an area on the carriage road where people used to, you know, take their garbage and they get about halfway up and they dump it over the side. It was the site of an old dump, but uh, it, it was continuing to be used for that. So, uh, in in I think a little overreaction, they they uh, closed down their property. Uh, posted it and so forth. And of course these are territories that people up here have hunted and fished and hiked on for mm -hmm. years and years and years. Well, <laughs> my first uh, association with it was I walked into Tafulio's one night and George Abbott sitting at the bar and, and George is saying, I feel like I'm being held captive in my own backyard. And I said, you know, what's all that about George? So George went on to talk about how he uh, had personally run into somebody from the uh, Penobscot Nation who told them that the lands were no, no longer available. And uh, everybody kind of kibitzed about that for a few days, and I decided to pull some. I was on the Board of Selectmen at the time and had had some association with the uh, Penn Nation, but uh, decided to bring together a group of people that were interested, and we met at my house on December 9th, 1999, and essentially decided to start an, an association to try and deal with these issues and whatever else might come along. Uh, and uh, uh, from there we had a series of meetings. We had Don Palmer from the Rangeley Guides and Sportsmen's Association, I think it is, over. he came over and talked to us. And their fo focus is a little different, but uh, uh, he gave us a lot of good ideas. Uh, and, and we had a formal meeting, a couple of formal meetings, the second one of which, uh, it, it's funny how clear, clairvoyant they seemed to be at that time, because at that meeting on January 29th, 2000, they voted uh, to, to create the organization, uh, and the purpose of it, and I've got to read this to get it right, uh, the purpose of it was uh, to promote and encourage outdoor recreation and conservation, to assist major landowners in the region and in the stewardship and protection of their lands, and to foster safety and conservation education among adults and children of the region. And that's pretty much what we do today, yeah. right? Uh, right. Uh, it doesn't emphasize quite as much as, as we do how much fun we have, uh, but uh, that, that's the uh, sort of formal uh, uh, verbiage on, on what we're supposed to do. Right. Uh, and from there, it really just kind of took off. Uh, a lot of members. Yeah. 1,100, 1,200, something like that members yeah, up there, yeah. big time. And, and there were folks <laughs> in, in that early crowd, uh, uh, Neil Trask, for instance. Uh, Neil was a, a, a shooter and, and a hunter and so forth. And uh, there was a gravel pit not too far from Spring Farm where, where we live. And uh, 
And people used to use it for shooting, and some folks were a little concerned about it. It wasn't a safe place, and Neil always thought, we got to find a safe place to, to go do you know, target practice. And uh, he happened to be on the uh, sanitary, uh, com uh, sanitary district board yeah. at the time and found out they had a big chunk of land up there on the top of the hill. Uh, and if you can see the place today, perhaps you have. Yes. It's just an amazing development. Yeah. But it started with a single little narrow uh, path in a gully yeah. uh, where, you know, you could, I guess if you went far enough into the bushes, you could get a hundred yard shot, you know. Uh, but that, that, with Neil and its, as its uh, steward, or at the helm of the stewardship, yeah. uh, it's just grown uh, tremendously over the year. While the association has 1,100 members, about half great. of them, but half of them are uh, members of the range as right. well. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's come a long way, baby. Yeah, it we've sure shown has. We've shown some photos right there of, of the range. And yeah, yeah, great. And it looks like it uh, safety is certainly. Um, There's our new five. That's our new five stand building we built uh, a year ago. We finished it up. Uh, that's uh, state of the art. In fact, it was kind of funny because somebody afterwards said, geez, you, this is about the only one in New England that's really built to the, the right specs. Really? And I thought, I didn't know you could build it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had to build it that way. That's why we did it. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know better. Well, we did it right. Got... We did it right, yeah. It's been very popular. And, so. and don't some of the uh, law officials use that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, yeah. They, they have to train... <clears throat> On a regular basis, so the border patrol, the sheriffs, the state police, the local police all come in and use it. Mm. And the border patrol have been very supportive of the range for many years in maintaining membership, and mm -hmm. you know, they've been they've been great. So it's it's good to give back to the community, but they've been giving back to us. So it's been exactly. been a win-win. And you don't have to be a member; you can pay to use it, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah it is open yeah. to the public. That's uh, the grants we get to, to pay for many of these improvements mm -hmm. required to be open to the public. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, the uh, there's a day use fee of five bucks. Right, I, I mean, know you nothing's know. really expensive. And and, <laughs> and by the way, I, uh, looking over some of the uh, original minutes of the, of the original meetings, uh, they established the fee membership fee at ten dollars. Huh. That's in nineteen uh, two uh, two thousand. It hasn't changed. It's still ten yep. bucks. Yeah. Fifteen for family. Yeah, and uh, if you want to be a member of the range, I think it's thirty. Wow. And that may have gone up five.